Some of us joke that single speeds actually have three gears, sitting, standing, and walking. That's sort of tongue in cheek, but not wrong, which raises a question. Given that the invention of multi-speed drivetrains made bicycles so much more versatile and easier to ride, what in the world is the appeal of an archaic, oversimplified, suboptimal single speed bike? The short answer is that taking away additional gears has some benefits in reliability, weight, efficiency, and not to get too metaphysical, but even the subjective experience of riding. Of course, that comes with some big trade-offs. So let's dive into exactly what you gain and lose by going single speed, based on my own thousands of miles of road and mountain biking on both geared and single speed drivetrains. And just to clarify, we're talking about single speeds with a freewheel, the kind where you can coast. A lot of this will also apply to fixed gear bikes, but fixies have some more unique trade-offs that I'm not focusing on right now. There's exactly one major drawback to single speeds, and it's right there in the name. If you want to shift down for more torque, you can't, so you'll just grind it out or simply get off and walk. Likewise, if you want to shift up for speed on a descent or in a tailwind, again, you can't, so you'll just pedal up to whatever speed your legs are capable of and then coast. Granted, a multi-speed drivetrain will also run out of high and low gears at some point, but obviously nowhere near as often. A less obvious drawback is that you can't exactly predict what gear ratio will best suit your terrain and riding style. You'll most likely spend a few hours and maybe 50 or 100 bucks, perhaps, to swap chain rings and freewheel cogs until you land on the right combination. That's especially true for single speed mountain biking since the steepness varies a lot more off the road than on it. As a quick aside, you can sort of work around this limitation with a setup known as dingle speed, as in double single speed. The idea is to use a double chain ring and sometimes a double freewheel cog to provide two gear ratios. So for example, you'd have a slightly higher one for the road to the trail, and a slightly lower one for the trail itself, and just manually move the chain between them. Your rear dropouts and brake will affect how easy it is to switch, but that's getting pretty deep into bike nerd territory. So let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like a separate deep dive video about. One other drawback is that it forces you to pay a lot more attention to your momentum as you're riding. You don't have the fallback option of just downshifting in a pinch, so you need to be able to foresee sections of trail or road where your momentum's gonna dwindle and try to build up a little extra before you reach those. You could argue that that makes you a better, more efficient rider all the way around, and it does, but it takes a little getting used to to start to think about your riding in that way. Another drawback in my experience is that it's just not easy to buy a complete single speed bike. Of course, there are plenty of entry level city and road models, which are fine, but if you want a more niche design or a higher end bike, then they're tough to find off the rack and almost never in stock locally. Most dedicated single speed riders just build up a frame or convert a spare geared bike, both of which can be fun projects, but they're not exactly convenient. Now that I've hopefully exhausted the obvious and maybe not so obvious drawbacks, let's switch gears. See what I did there? And look at why you might still want to give this a try. Reliability is the strongest practical argument for a single speed. They make it inherently easy to hop on and go anytime in any conditions. After all, there is no shifting mechanism that needs service or that might break in the middle of a ride or that gets clogged with mud and packed with snow if that's an issue where you ride. This might be a game changer if your derailleur causes too many mechanical issues and you're not sold on the weight or the sort of black box internal complexity of hub gears. Of course, you're still on the hook for some routine maintenance for the chain and gears, although a belt drive single speed would even eliminate most of that. It's hard to compare price and weight directly since hardly any bikes come in both single speed and geared options. But if you're building one from scratch, then a single speed drivetrain might save anywhere from 50 to a couple hundred bucks, depending on which group set it replaces. Some bike shops also charge perhaps 20% or 40% less for tune-ups, since they do save quite a bit of time when there isn't much of a drivetrain to tune. As for weight, there's a lot of variation, but an entry level rear derailleur, cassette, trigger shifter, and cable and housing altogether weighs something like one and a half pounds. We'll just ignore front derailleurs since a lot of bikes don't use them these days anyhow. An entry level internally geared hub and the stuff that goes with it would come in closer to three pounds combined. 
But a single speed bike has only a freewheel, which is something like a quarter pound. Even if you add a chain tensioner, you're still probably under half a pound combined. These cost and weight savings are neat bonuses when you go single speed, but they're not great reasons to choose in the first place. Keep in mind that if a single speed bike is not fun for you, then you'll just have a slightly cheaper, slightly lighter bike that you don't enjoy. Whenever the chain wraps around a cog or a pulley, there's a tiny bit more friction and mechanical resistance. Rear derailers have two pulleys, and single speed drivetrains usually have none, notwithstanding certain chain tensioners. So they transfer power just a bit more efficiently. It's hard to quantify, especially because the cleanliness and lubrication of your chain can make a big difference. But from personal experience, any gear ratio will consistently feel maybe one or two teeth easier than an identical gear ratio on a multi-speed bike. This again is a nice bonus point for single speeds, but not a reason to choose. Derailers and cables are not exactly beautiful. There is something aesthetically pleasing about the nice, clean, minimalist look of a single speed. Now do most people care? No, not for a minute. And is it kind of strange that I admire the aesthetics of a bike's drivetrain? Yes it is, I can't argue with that. But in my opinion, reducing the visual clutter just does a little something for your satisfaction and pride of ownership. And if a single speed helps fulfill a certain cycling aesthetic that you enjoy, then that's great. Style and elegance won't make hills any easier, but they're not irrelevant either. I would contend that the best parts of riding a single speed are way more subjective and even psychological. For one thing, it makes familiar territory feel new again. Novelty is a fun part of cycling, but it's not always practical to get novelty through more exotic or challenging rides or through more high-tech bikes. Sometimes going the opposite direction, toward bare-bones simplicity, is a more sustainable way to enjoy that freshness, or at least a new sort of challenge. And perhaps my single favorite part is the peacefulness, you might say, when shifting just doesn't cross your mind. Even when you're an experienced cyclist and no longer have to deliberately think about shifting, it still floats around in the back of your mind, and on some level, it's yet another decision you're making dozens or hundreds of times on each ride. So when you ride a bike that cannot shift, the whole experience is just a tiny bit more tranquil, you might say. It's that much more removed from whatever daily things you might be riding to take a break from in the first place. Now is that worth the physical challenge of not having gears? It totally depends, but at least pretty often, my answer is a clear yes. It's hard to go wrong with a geared bike, so that's the best default choice for almost every cyclist. You can ride more places, more easily, period. I mean, that is the point of gears, and that's why they were such a revolutionary invention in the first place. But if you ride flat terrain, or if you have really severe mud and snow, or if you just want to experience familiar routes in a new way, then a single speed might actually be a lot more fun than you think. It's more of a back to basics, face your limits, overcome the challenge sort of fun, since it's simply not as easy. But sometimes, that's the point. Thanks for watching, and I'd appreciate your hitting the like button if you found this helpful, and please leave a comment below if you agree, or totally disagree, or just picked up something useful. Anyway, get out there, take care, and I'll catch you next time.